Are you guys looking for the best way to get slow motion footage out of your new camera? For today's video, I'll teach you guys how to properly edit your slow motion footage and give you some recording tips and tricks. Coming up. Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Jason Anthony, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a full-time content creator. And on this channel, I like to teach you guys how to step up your content creating skills. So if you guys haven't saw, I did come up with an A7 III video setting guide, and that'll be linked right up here. And I did receive a comment on that asking, why doesn't my slow motion footage look slow motion when I'm doing playback? And I want to make this video because when I was first editing on a Sony camera, I would expect the same thing. A lot of you guys who come from Nikon or Canon, when you record slow motion footage, there's a chance that it's going to be in body slow-mo. The answer on the new Sony is that is not the case. Now at any point, if you guys wanna skip ahead, I'll have some timestamps below. And what that'll do is show you my helpful tips how I edit in slow-mo at any post-processing and editing um, from there. So if you guys wanna skip ahead, jump around, feel free to click below. Now on the new Sony cameras, there is a S and Q feature which does slow motion and time lapses. However, I'm not the biggest fan because there's no way to change the megabits per second recording limit with that feature. So yes, you can get in body slow motion by using that dial, but it's not gonna be the highest quality footage as if you were to use my video settings guide with 120 FPS at 100 megabits per second. That's gonna give you the sharpest looking image. So before we get to editing the slow motion footage and how to properly slow it down, I wanna give you guys some tips and tricks that I use when I'm filming with the camera. Now, the first tip and trick is, it's pretty self-explanatory, but nail your focus, guys. Make sure you're using focus peaking and focus magnifier. If you have to use manual focus, do it. Sometimes for video, I don't trust the autofocus features on the Sony cameras. If there's low light or something moving that I have to track really well, I'll put it in manual focus with the peaking and making sure my focus is on point. For tip number two, you're gonna scale up your footage. Yes, I said it, scale up your 1080 footage. YouTube actually gives you a higher bit rate when you shoot in 4K and 2K, and you're not gonna lose quality. If anything, your video is gonna look better by upscaling your 1080p slow motion footage to 2K, and I'll show you guys how to do that once we get to that editing. I learned that from Cody Blue, it helps me out a ton. Another tip, and this might seem a little bit obvious to you guys that have done video before, but use ND filters. When you're shooting with frame rates on video, you wanna use the 180 rule. Now what the 180 rule calls for is doubling your frame rate for your shutter speed. So if you're shooting at 120 frames per second, you're going to want to use a shutter speed of one over 240th if you were to double it. But because a lot of cameras don't have one over 240th, you can use one over 250th. Now, if it's very bright outside, you may not be able to match that shutter speed and have to bump your shutter speed up. And what that will do is give you choppier footage. So definitely invest in an ND filter. I like to use variable filters and this way I could turn the filter and cut the light and let more light in. Now for the last tip is going to be sharpening in post and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I have a quick little preset that I like to lay over all my sharpening. Now in body, when I'm using my Sony camera for my B-roll setting, which is the 120 FPS, and once again, I'll put it up here for my video settings, I like to have the detail at zero. When I shoot in 4K, I dial the detail back a little bit to negative four or five. This way that 4K footage isn't over the top with its sharpness. But I do, for the 1080p, like to have that uh, detail set to zero. This way I have a little in-body sharpening. And then for post, I sharpen up a tiny bit and that gives me a crispier image. So with no further ado, let's get into Adobe Premiere and I'll show you guys how to modify your footage to match a 24 frames per second timeline, giving you that buttery smooth slow motion and then a couple post-processing tips like sharpening and uh, the upscaling and setting up your sequence. Let's go ahead and do that. 
All right, guys, so we're in Adobe Premiere and I have a couple clips here. One was from a promotional video I did with a push in at 120. Then I have myself pulling out my camera out of the backpack. And then I have a 60 frames per second clip um, of my drone. So I wanted to show you guys that there's different ways to do this using different frame rates. So for the first thing, what we want to do is set up the sequence properly. So we're going to go to file, new, sequence, and I like using the 1080p DLSR 24. Click on settings, and now right here is where you would upscale to 2K or 4K, just type in the proper dimensions. Now for the sake of the video, I'm just going to do it in standard 1080p, so we'll click OK. So now that we have our clips, and one thing you guys have seen, you said it in the comments, why isn't my footage looking slow motion? Because we didn't record it in body. We're showing 120 frames per second live. So what we wanna do is match our 24 frames per second timeline, and all we need to do is click on the clip, right click, and then go to modify. Now what you can do is if you have a bunch of B-roll shot at 120 or 60 or any different frame rates, hit shift, click on the top one, select them all, then right click or hit control, go to modify, and now we're going to interpret the footage. It says right here, if you select one of the tracks, it'll show you whether it's 60 FPS, 120. What we wanna do is click on assume this frame rate and type in 24. Now instantly you see this goes down, drag it out, and now it's going to be in slow motion. So that's how you properly adjust your slow motion. Now, what sometimes people will do is have the clip in the timeline, right click it, go to speed duration, and then slow it down from here. But that's not the proper way. It won't look as crispy. So we have this footage right here. Let's drag all the clips on. Okay, so now we have our slow motion push in, and you can always adjust the size if you're shooting it in 4K, 2K, you could always go to effect controls, hit the scale, and change how much you wanna go in and out of your footage. Okay, so now what we're going to do is some post-processing sharpening. So what you want to do is click on this tab right here for new item, go to adjustment layer, make sure your timestamp matches, so you could either have it at 24 or 23976. And then we're just going to drag that on top of our clip. So now all the editing we're going to be doing is going to be on the adjustment layer. Let me make this clear guys, color grade, change your effects, do absolutely everything to your video before you sharpen. This is the absolute last thing you're going to want to do. So make sure your adjustment layer is highlighted, click on effects, and now we're going to type in unsharp mask. Drag unsharp mask on top of your footage. Now what some people will do is click on the color tab and then in the creative sharpen from here. I like to use unsharp mask. So we're gonna click on effect controls and now here is the sharpening and everything right here. And now for a quick preset, we're just gonna do 120. We're gonna have a radius of 1.9. And then for your threshold, go down and just bump it up a tiny notch or two. And this is also from Cody Blue. Cody, if you're watching this, hopefully we could collab someday. All right, so let's render this out real quick. Just hitting I and O for in and out points. And then we're gonna hit enter to render. Hopefully this is fast. Okay, so we're rendered out. All right, guys, so we just finished rendering. I zoomed in a little bit so you guys could see the difference between the footage with the sharpening and unsharpening, let's pay attention to the battery grip. So that's with it off and that's with it on. Notice how everything gets a little brighter, the edges seem a little bit crispier. That's what we want, that's some good slow motion. And now you could chop up this footage however it is you would like. Now if you wanna drag that onto this, we can go ahead and hold down option, click on adjustment layer, pull it over, let go of your mouse and then let go of option if you're using a Mac and now we copy the same exact settings to here. All right, so we're done rendering this footage. Let's play it through nice and slow. Once again, you can edit, chop it up, speed ramp on and off. Pay attention to the jersey and the juice bottles right here and look at the difference. 
It's not over the top, but it gives it that little pop that you want, and that's exactly how it should be. You don't want it to be too, too sharp. So let's resize this. So click on the clip if this is 4K footage, which it is, it's from my Phantom 4 Pro at 60 frames per second. So we're gonna go down here. Let's do it right there, looks good. And then we have a little orbiting shot. So I'll trim this right here for you and let's play it. Now I am playing at one fourth. It's not going to be the best quality just for playback purposes. Let's see if it'll actually play in full. Nice and smooth slow motion. That's 60 frames per second dialed down to 24 frames per second. And once again, all you have to do is hold down option, drag the adjustment layer on it, pull it out, and then render out. And that's it. We sharpened our slow motion footage. It will look a little bit crispier. And that's exactly what we want, guys. All right, guys, so that wraps up today's tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If it was, comment slow-mo below so I know you guys got it this far. Follow me on Instagram. I upload new photos and videos daily. And if you did like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you're new here, subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.